So thank you for the kind introduction. Welcome to my presentation on I was voted to be a committer. Now what? I'm really happy to see a few long-time committers and members in the audience. Because really I'm... Sorry, oh. it's using the microphone. Yeah, thank sure. you very much. Thank you. Um, so I'm happy to see a few members and committers here to help me out with any questions that actually I might have in the presentation. So it's going to be a little bit, bit more interactive. Who am I to tell you something about committership? I am software engineer at Nokia, working on Nokia Maps. If you go to mapsnokia.com, search for cat categories. That's what my team does. Apart from that, I'm a member at the Apache Software Foundation. I'm co-founder of the Apache Mahout project whose goal is to build scalable machine learning algorithms. I happen to be co-founder of Berlin Apache Hadoop Get Together as well as Berlin Buzzwords. Main reason for that mainly was that I don't like traveling too much, so I rather have the geeks come to me than the other way around. Coming to the interactive part, how many of you are using Apache products? Okay, pretty much everyone. How many of you have contributed a patch? How many of those of you have still one laying around that's waiting to be polished? Anyone? Um, for those of you who wait too long, I've got a nice rule for you, and that is Yonick's law of patches. Yonick is a solar, solar leucine committer, and he has the law that a half-baked patch in Jira with no documentation, no tests, and no backwards compatibility is better than no patch at all. So better get your patches in very early to get feedback. You will have to change them anyway. And you better learn how to change it early on before you've spent a lot of time on polishing and making it perfect to your knowledge. How many of you are committers? Okay, quite a few. How many of you are PMC members? Still many. What about PMC chairs? A few. What about ASF members? Okay, so we have a few new people, but not too many. I'm going to cover um, four dimensions. One is on administrivia that you will be facing when becoming a committer. I will be covering some infrastructure questions. I will highlight that becoming a committer is not only about coding, but also about lots of other talks. And finally, um, go quickly over how to stay motivated and how to s sustain your energy. Before going into detail, um, when you do become a committer, you may have lots of questions. Some things may be confusing. Not all of the processes of your project may be documented. Don't be afraid to ask questions if there's anything unclear. So far, I haven't met a single person who wasn't happy to answer questions. So there's a few websites that are helpful to get started. Those are the ones that I got sent to me when I became a committer years ago. Um, one explains how the foundation in general works. That's most of the stuff uh, is covered at ApacheCon. If you've been earlier to uh, Benson's presentation on how the incubator works, on Nick Burgess' presentation on the Apache way, um, so it's mainly um, what you should know. There's special pages for people who start contributing. There's um, documentation for new committers. There's guides on how to get started and where to find uh, links to more documentation and to your infrastructure. OK, let's get started. Admin's trivia. The first thing that will happen to you is that someone asks you to sign an, a so-called ICLA, a Individual Contributor License Agreement. Essentially, what that does is gives the ASFs the right to use your contribution in, your co in their code, redistribute it as part of their releases. One gotcha here, if you're contributing to the project during working hours, your contract may say that anything you do during um, working hours belongs to, to your corporation. We do have a special contract here that you can hand to, to your employer to sign it, which is a CCLA, and then essentially you're good. 
There have been people who had issues getting such CCLA signed. If you happen to have one of these employers, don't be afraid to talk to other committers on how they got things settled out, on how which arguments worked out. By now, there's even companies who have published blog posts on why they submitted a signed CCLA. Um, so that may help you a lot in that argument, especially if you're the first person coming up with that document. That may be a little bit weird. And as Benson um, explained earlier today in his talk on the incubator, don't even bother to ask whether you can add special sections or remove special sections. There won't be any changes to that document. If you do have legal questions, there is a legal uh, mailing list, both for internal and external questions. Keep in mind that the ones um, published on the mailing list list, they tend to be open and archived, so your questions will be public as well. However, these archives do provide lots of documentation on previous questions asked, so it may be worthwhile to check these out. One mailing list that I have found being greatly under-advertised, so many commuters that I bumped into didn't know about it, it's party at apache.org. It's nowhere published. It's not archived. If I found it very handy if I go to a foreign city and I don't know anyone there to just send an email to that list asking who's out there, who's happy to have a beer or a coffee with me. And usually people will answer. So I went to Australia, to Sydney last autumn. I sent an email and it took half a week to have an Apache dinner set up with five to six people attend. So this mailing list does work. <laughs> Speaking to getting in touch personally, there are a few events that work very well. All of you are already at ApacheCon, so that's a very good way to get in touch with other committers and to meet people face to face. It does help to be able to put faces to otherwise <coughs> unknown names that you encounter just on the mailing list and suddenly you understand how these people sort of work and how things that they tell you on, on, on a list are meant. So get in touch in these face-to-face -face meetings. As Bertrand told us earlier is that anything that doesn't happen online and on list doesn't hap hasn't happened. That doesn't mean that you're discouraged to meet other committers personally. You're just encouraged to get all the um, information that's important for the community back to the dev list and take the final decision there. It doesn't mean that you're forbidden to go out and have a drink with someone you develop code with. Um, speaking of a next step, if you are a committer, chances are that Sometime later, you do become a member of the foundation. Essentially, what that means is not much more than getting another two mailing lists to your inbox, being members at and board at. Oh, correct. <laughs> Whether you want them or not. In addition, you get access to a few internal SVN modules containing contractual stuff. You do get to vote new members in. You do get to vote on the board you do get the chance to become actually a board member and get yet more work to do. Um, so how do you become a member? How do you get these more mailing, mails into your inbox? You simply stay with the project, do cross-project work, help with infrastructure, and usually it happens way faster than you ever imagined. Okay, speaking of helping with infrastructure. See, once you get a, become a committer, essentially you get commit access to your project, either through SVN or through Git, depending on what you work on. You get a very fancy email address, being your username at apache.org. Great thing. You get SSH access to people at apache.org, which is a server that's at the US West Coast, if I remember correctly. So if you ever need a server outside of whatever your company um, networks that might be handy someday. You do get a nice web address if you need it, peopleapache.org slash your username. Depending on your project, you may get access to continuous integration systems like Jenkins, for instance. 
you may get elevated privileges on JIRA so that you can get um, new, like, so that you can, admi can administer the project. What stays the same essentially is your JIRA or Bakzilla account, your wiki accounts, etc. Who provides that infrastructure? There is a team of volunteers and paid people providing all the infrastructure. Um, you can find, more, find out more about the team if you go to their webpage it, and you can check out Infra Volunteer to find out more or you can check out infra.apache.org. I have been told that um, help is always welcome. Benson mentioned this morning that just saying I want that new technology and I'm going to do it doesn't really get you the new technology but volunteering to put some work into it at least raises your, your chance to get stuff done. Just going there to, to their JIRA and saying I want that technology and I want it tomorrow probably isn't going to get it done. There is an info bot on Twitter that shares details when stuff goes blatantly wrong. There is mailing lists that inform you on what's going on. There is a web page that's usually helpful, which is monitoring Apache.org to find out if Jira is really down or if it's just your connection. Um, third topic, it's not only about coding. The first thing that you can help your project with is to help get the word out. That may mean if you do have connections to your local press, help get the release and change log messages to those um, publishers. It may be worthwhile to coordinate that with press at apache.org. Sally Kuderi, who is at ApacheCon this time, is usually very open if you go to her, if you either have someone who has general questions on the foundation, or if you need help with writing a press release, like finding out what's, what belongs into that press release, how to do that, and help you out. If you do have a personal blog, do use it, post about new releases, post about features, about design, and help spread these news in the community. Also getting a bit further to the coding level, it's not only about writing code anymore when you are a committer. You do get that special commit bit, but there are still contributors that are um, sending in Jira, that are sending in patches through Jira. So it's important to give them feedback on their code. It's important to give them feedback on their design. It's, impo it's important to give that feedback rather rapidly, to take the patch, to apply it to, to your code base, to test it, and to give feedback in a timely manner. If I work on a work project, I do a patch, I send it in, and half a year later, I may get feedback on what works and what doesn't work. I may already be assigned to a different project and have no longer the cycles to do what needs to be done to get that patch in. So it's really important to get quick feedback to users. Help with documentation, as Noreen pointed out earlier in that track, help with writing books, blog posts, answer questions on the mailing list, and in general, enable people by pointing them to the right documentation. It's not helpful to give them the complete solution over and over again, that just is additional work on your side, but it's also not particularly helpful if you tell them to read the fine manual, because they may not need, know which page to look at, so it may be very important to point them to the exact page or to tell them how to get there. And while you're at it, it may be important to ask them what they tried to find that documentation in order to fix um, your ways of accessing that documentation. You can help out with moderating mail mailing lists. You can help out in the incubator. So essentially sharing your knowledge of the foundation to new projects, teaching them how things work. So on motivation, first and foremost, so that relates 
essentially to Deb Nicholson's presentation earlier today. It's very important to know when to delegate. So it's important to keep in mind that you should enable your users, you should provide documentation, essentially not only on the code, but also on the processes. How do you do patch reviews? What do you do before releasing? What do you do in order to release? These kinds of um, documentations help others who want to take over your work at a later stage. You can save some work because there's Apache wide documentation that usually applies for cross-project policies, just link to it. Another thing to keep in mind is to keep the build simple and fast so that people that are new to, re to your project can easily set up and can get started. So that's something to work on. You can work to encourage people to submit patches if someone comes along and says, hey, there's a little typo in the documentation encourage them to provide a first patch, which usually is their first step into your project and which usually is the, your first way of getting a new helping hand there. Review quickly, of course. Um, delegate, try to get delegate work to others instead of volunteering over and over again and probably over committing. And one thing that usually works, so at least at Mahout we get that very often, is that people come to the list and ask, hey, I want to help out, what can I do? One thing that helps out there is to have a list of predefined issues that are marked as appropriate for beginners. So essentially in, when was it, 2011, after ApacheCon, we did a Hadoop hackathon in Berlin, and we had Jacob Homan come in and a few others, both committers, users. So we did a list of stuff that people would want to work on. Essentially, some bugs to fix, some um, components that w people wanted to use. And Jacob made the um, proposal to teach people to submit a patch. Teaching people to submit a patch in that case meant nothing more than taking beginners' um, issues in the issue tracker. And those issues really were just about, please fix a typo in that documentation. Please fix, I don't know, a very little thingy that doesn't break the build if you make anything wrong. What was interesting to see was most of the attendees were either seasoned software developers or they came from university working on their PhD um, studies they were very interested in going through that process. So you may be, as an open source developer, sometimes we forget that there are people out there who have no clue on how the tool patch works. So some of them even don't know how to submit that patch to a project, let alone know how <coughs> the process afterwards looks like. Like, what does the committer do in order to get it in? What does the release process look like afterwards? So it may be worthwhile to teach people who do have um, decent coding knowledge to understand how we work and to teach them. I mean, after all, it's not very hard what we do. It's not very complicated. So it may just be worthwhile to teach them how it works. Another thing to get motivated is to get in touch with others. Use local meetups, use conferences, go for a beer after hours. Just get to talk to people who are in the same situation, who would also develop free software, who also contribute, say, to Apache projects. Um, don't work away in your lonely office, but do have some people to bounce idea off, ideas off. So it helps a lot to either meet in person or at least post these ideas online. Also, if you do need help, ask early. Uh, if you do need help in person and say there is no meetup near you, create one of these meetups. Usually, at least in my experience, they tend to explode pretty quickly. So I have seen a few meetups in Berlin start with five to 10 people. And after three months, they were like 30 to 50. And after a year, they may turn into, into a conference. Well, may, maybe that's just my experience, but 
that kind of works there because they have a very vibrant startup so, uh, scene. If you don't know anyone near you, uh, trust me, the likelihood is very high that there is someone at the ASF, at the um, community development project, there is a committer map that you can use, that you can query with your exact location and query for committers that are near you. So that may be helpful to find like-minded people. Also keep in mind that what you're working on is not a product that's going to be shrink wrap wrapped and shipped to customers, it's a project. So it's important to keep in mind that if there are issues, use the opportunity to motivate people to contribute back. Patches welcome may not be the most inviting sentence, so it's very commonly used. What does help is telling people that come with issues that, this would, that implementing that very feature would be a very valuable contribution, at least if you do mean it so. It doesn't help to promise new features as part of a roadmap if you don't, can't, cannot stick to that very roadmap. And at least open source projects that I know have the tendency of not sticking to the roadmap because essentially you are not the boss of these people. So they decide on what they want to work on during their free time. They decide on which features they want to spend their free time on if you want to impose work on them, it's very easy for them to say, okay, that's just my free time, that's not fun anymore, goodbye. Then that doesn't give you anything. So do hand off work, but keep in mind that you, what you're dealing with essentially is not subordinates, but it's um, equal volunteers. What does help peop draw people in? We've had that earlier in this track, is to say thank you over and over again. Thank you is the one currency that comes for free. So essentially it's like money printing. Oftentimes then saying thank you really is all you can hand out as a reward. I once was um, offered some iTunes whatever vouchers for a patch I did but that was just one time not in the ASF so. <laughs> But really, um, saying thank you publicly is much more motiv motivating than any monetary um, rewards that you may get. So you can give credit in the issue tracker ticket. You can give credit in publications in the commit message. You do have release notes. If you do have a new section on your website and you do have someone who contributed a major feature, put their name next to it. So it was very scary, but also kind of nice for me to see my name next to a Tomcat patch years ago. Also, when you do give credit, there's a difference between saying good job and specifying precisely what was good about it. If you are precise, it's much more believable for the one who did contribute that patch that what he did was valuable. One warning, don't take on more work than you can accomplish. We are all volunteers, we all would love to help, we would all love to fix all the bugs in our issue tracker, however there is limited time. Unfortunately the date only has 20, uh, 24 hours. Also I would of course love to have it more hours. Don't go forward and commit to fixing bugs or adding new features that you don't have the bandwidth to work on. What happens if you do that is a, you get um, overloaded with work, but B, many others will refrain from even looking at that issue because essentially you've volunteered to do it and essentially because you want to do it. So they w will, will not want to stop you from doing it. If you have happened to have stepped up for something, and you don't have the bandwidth anymore, either you've committed to too much, or your life has changed and you don't have the time to do it anymore, don't be afraid to step back to tell the community, hey, I've volunteered to do that, I don't have the bandwidth anymore, please can someone else take up the thread. On the other end of the spectrum, if someone in your community goes and says that they don't have the bandwidth anymore, don't go and punish them. 
essentially what they've done is to unblock some of these issues and give them back to you for someone else to fix. Sure, it would have been better to get that patch in, but it's much more um, efficient in that, in that situation to kind of nourish a, um, a feeling of you don't get punished if you do make a mistake. So it's much more rewarding to motivate others to do the same if they are in that situation instead of um, making the problem much more grave. Essentially, that's about don't overcommit, don't, don't fall um, victim to volunteerities. Sometimes it may be necessary to s simply get out, get some fresh air, it may be helpful to go offline from time to time. It might be helpful to tell your community that you're offline now, so they don't expect you to react for the next three to four to five weeks. Otherwise, they may wonder what happened. Um, we've had mails go out to new fathers where the sender would worry about what happened to him. Well, usually it takes a while until they get back online, and that's just fine. If life changes a lot and maybe you are no long, longer too interested in the project or you are no longer, you no longer have the cycles to really um, spend time on that project, there is a way out. You can go emeritus. It's handled slightly differently for each project, but usually it means that you get your commitment t taken away at least temporarily. You may. Um, vote to still remain active on the mailing list or at least read it and have access to it. Essentially, at Apache, we do have set rules that merit doesn't go away. So at any point in the future where you decide, I do have the time and I do have these cycles again, you can come back and you can continue contributing to the project. So essentially, my message to you is that there's a lot of fun waiting for you. There's an amazing community to help you and you can meet some of these people in the coming two days. However, you should make sure to keep a sane work-life balance. And with that, I would like to invite you to become part of the Apache community, become a committer of some project. If you do have a problem with some Apache software, and if you do use it, I'm pretty sure that you'd have one or another problem with it. Just scratch your own itch is the best way to get involved. Just take the libraries that doesn't work quite as well for you as it could, fix the issues you have with it, even if it's just documentation issues, get these fixes back. That's the safest way to become a committer very soon. Usually maintaining your own fork is way more expensive than getting a patch in. Yeah, sure, it is some work to polish stuff. Yeah, sure, it's work to get feedback um, put into your patch. But in general, it's much, more, it's much cheaper to have such patch maintained upstream. Also, it's very valuable to get reviews and feedback from people with a broader understanding of the project. So your changes may work now, but you may not have an idea of the implications on the project as a whole. So you may not have taken into account some of the side effects that your changes have. So getting that feedback may be very valuable into stabilizing your changes and into not running into surprises later on. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions. No questions? Yes, um, can you use the microphone, please? So going back to the uh, uh it was uh, uh, providing mentorship for patches uh, that come in. Uh, something that came up for uh, uh, today at lunch uh, with a couple of people was just that uh, you can uh, assign people who promise to mentor a particular issue through to completion. Uh, what do you think of that as a strategy as opposed to having, uh, uh, say, some of you, uh, a community of people that sort of promise at, en masse? Well, I think that's a very good idea. Speaking of mentoring, there's also and so first of all, um, having a mentor for specific patch patches may be very good to get feedback quickly. It's also, so having that conce concept of mentor mentorship also, also helps to get new people into the, into the project. 
We've seen good success with Google Summer of Code in summer, where essentially you get a student and you have a dedicated mentor assigned to that student, not necessarily um, with the same technical background, but essentially helping them through the process, navigate the project, navigate how working in that project works. So having that kind of dedicated one face assigned to you may help get you across the first boundaries. Yes. But when it comes to patches, uh, different uh, Apache groups have different ways on administering patches. Uh, the two that I'm acquainted with, uh, we prefer that we prefer that they uh, submit their patches to Jira, and then anyone interested can then uh, provide the mentorship back to the person that is requested a patch or has the issue. Okay, so let's see, that was essentially an addition to the question. There's multiple ways to, multiple, multiple ways that the AS have to deal with the reviews. So what you've seen that is that some projects have assigned mentors to provide feedback for patches. Not necessarily assigned mentors, but uh, committers on the committers that are interested, or the chairperson okay. usually helps out. Okay, so it's usually there's like a dedicated group who is interested mm -hmm. in. Okay, yep. Yep. Well, I think that the, the key issue that was brought up by the people that are at lunch was that by making this promise as part of the. Uh, uh, as part of the issue itself, that it encourages people to participate who otherwise would say, oh, I don't understand enough about Git, or yep. I don't understand enough about the process. Uh, and so those people would actually volunteer on the issue. So if, if anyone, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that, that, that if you respond to an issue at most Apache projects, that you're going to get a response eventually yep. from uh, somebody. But the thing is, that, uh, taking that initial step of actually signing on is, I think, uh, uh, the people I were talking with were suggesting was more likely to happen if there was someone who had promised in advance, yep. I will help you walk through you. Yep. I will help walk you through this. Yep, makes sense. Yes. Um, do you have any advice on for someone like me who's on the PMC and probably is going to be the PMC chair soon? <laughs> <laughs> you mean advice on how to avoid becoming the PMC chair? <laughs> yeah. I don't have much other than telling people that you don't want to be and finding <laughs> someone who's better. <laughs> it's probably okay, it's just it's scary. <laughs> so what about the other members? What's your advice? You know, what is it about it that scares you? Um, just the taking responsibility, basically. <laughs> well, I mean, um, you know, the, the idea is that um, the PMC chair is there, and I said this before, as the eyes and ears of the board. Basically, is the PMC healthy? Is it operating in, in, a, in a healthy manner? You know, it's, uh, you know, and if it is, your job is simple. Your job is basically just, you know, every quarter or so sending an email to the board saying these are the releases, these are the contributors, and stuff like that. Um, if you think, based on your experience and your background, that the PMC is not healthy, then the board is there to help you, you know, if you need advice or something like that. So so being a PMC chair is 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 some additional responsibility, but it's not responsibility that you need to take on by yourself. Because there are a lot of other people there who are able to help you, you know, associated with that. You know, so don't be scared about it. In a lot of ways, it's really a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a really good indication of your status in the community. That they feel that you're, you, you know, the community well enough, you know, the, uh, the, the project well enough that they trust you to be able to basically be their liaison between the project. <coughs> And, and one other note just for everyone in the room about PMCs and PMC chairs, from the point of view of running your project, a PMC chair in best practice 
doesn't have any more say than anybody else in the PMC. Everyone still has one vote on releases and new committers. Mm -hmm. So it, there's no additional thing there. That there are some projects that sort of use that as a, a spokesperson in some cases, which is, you know, okay to agree. But um, that's not the point. The point really is just being the person who makes sure the board gets a report in a big sense. And then if the board has a question, they will ask the chair to make sure the PMC answers the question, certainly. But really, that's that's the most important thing. The rest is just, you know, feel good that people um, touch you. Thank you. I'm assuming you're going to accept that. <laughs> yes. How do I subscribe to the party at Apache? <laughs> <laughs> I sent an email and didn't do anything. Usually, it's the same way as you subscribe to any other mailing list at Apache. Party desk. Party desk. Yeah. Back. There's that. Are you a party or uh, yeah. algorithm? That I guess. <laughs> okay, if there are no other questions, I'm around for the next two days. If you have further questions, feel free to catch me. Thank you.